I grew up in New Jersey, and uh, it's where I, I started playing soccer in the United States. But now I, go, now I call it football after two years in Egypt. And uh, was a, a, a good player, but believe me, nothing special. Uh, and at the time that I, I finished uh, Princeton University, the chances as a player weren't great. And uh, so I began my coaching career. I, I coached for many years in college, first Ohio University, then University of Virginia then for many years at Princeton, um, but it was really excited then to get involved with Major League Soccer when it began. And so, you know, when I think about everything that's happened in the last 20 years, uh, everything from coaching uh, some very good teams at Princeton and then eventually uh, winning the double with the Chicago Fire, coaching the U.S. National Team, Confederations Cup, World Cup, uh, and then two uh, really interesting, unforgettable years in Egypt. Uh, I've been fortunate to have had uh, many experiences. Uh, I've coached uh, some really big players, Christos Stoichkov, Yuri Jorkaev, now Mohamed Abitreka. Uh, and I've been really uh, also fortunate to, to coach some young players that uh, have done well for themselves. Um, in Chicago, we had DeMarcus Beasley and Carlos Bocanegra and Josh Wolf, all guys that moved on and did well. Uh, at the Metro Stars, Ricardo Clark, who, who had a short run here in Stabek. Uh, Michael Bradley, uh, who has done all right for himself. And uh, uh, Chivas, Sasha Cluston, who's at Anderlecht, Brad Guzan, who's at Aston Villa. And then most recently, some of the, the young guys in Egypt, I, I think in the coming days, uh, Mohamed Salah is going to be in the newspaper because there's going to be a big transfer uh, out of FC Basel to uh, perhaps a EPL team. So uh, great experiences working with young players, working with some big players and, and having a chance to, to coach some great teams. The first two years I, I was uh, DC United with Bruce Arena and uh, we won the MLS Championship, MLS Cup, both years. And then in 1998, Chicago came into the league. And uh, as a first-year team, uh, as the head coach in Chicago, we won the double. So I, I, I have the, the, the uh, part where uh, I was involved with the first three champions in, in MLS. So that's something that... Uh, uh, still I'm quite proud of. As I moved through the system in the United States, I coached at all levels. Uh, I coached youth teams, I coached in university, I coached in Major League Soccer. And then when you get the chance, the honor to coach your national team, it's, uh, it's special. Uh, it's something that uh, means uh, a great deal because you think about all the people along the way that would have given anything to do any job with the national team. Uh, and now you get the chance to, to be the manager. And uh, during the five years uh, with the U.S. team, uh, we qualified for the World Cup. We won our group in the World Cup. We made it to the final of Confederations Cup. Uh, so we had some great achievements. And uh, uh, I feel like uh, U.S. soccer uh, during that period, uh, we continued to, to build on the success that Bruce Arena had before me. And uh, I, I'm lucky for having had that, that chance to coach the U.S. team. When I went to Egypt, uh, I knew uh, that it was a huge challenge. Uh, I knew that it was a period when uh, a lot was going on in the country, a lot of turmoil. Um, um, but I... I had a sense of the passion for the game in Egypt. Um, also in the Confederations Cup, uh, Egypt was in our group. And my goalkeeper coach in the United States was Egyptian American. So I, I had a pretty good idea about uh, um, the history of Egypt soccer, the passion. Uh, and, and when I went to talk to the uh, Egyptian Football Association about the job, Literally from the second I got off the plane, everyone I met talked about the dream of going to the World Cup. And when I was finished with the U.S., my first thought was to get back to coaching a club. Uh, I was hopeful uh, about the idea of working in Europe. But when uh, the Egyptian th 
challenge came along, I just felt this is really once in a lifetime. Uh, Zach Abdel, my goalkeeper coach, uh, came along, uh, was my goalkeeper coach in Egypt. Uh, and, and then I'll never forget uh, the night that the tragedy in Port Said took place. As ready as I was for the challenge, uh, the one thing that I never expected was to see 74 young fans lose their lives uh, at a match. And uh, we had a lot of players uh, that played for the Egyptian national team who played for Ali. Uh, and those players saw young, young people lose their lives. Uh, they used the locker room as really the first aid station. And seeing those players days later and, and getting a sense as to what they had experienced, uh, Port Said changed the landscape uh, of football in Egypt forever. Uh, they shut the league down. And in the midst of all that, we had to keep the dream of going to the World Cup alive. And so it, it required, uh, as the leader, a, a show of strength and commitment. And, when I made the, the players uh, understand that we had a chance to do something special, uh, their response was incredible. And, and you have to give credit. You have players coming into national team camps, uh, not being paid by their clubs, totally uncertain about what their career, the, the future holds for their careers and yet still coming into national team camps excited and motivated, uh, that's something special. And, and so we tried for two years to just say that we weren't gonna let anything get in our way, that at a time when really everyone in Egypt was divided, that we were gonna be different, we were gonna be united. And we came so close. Uh, eight World Cup qualifiers during my time there and we won seven but it wasn't good enough because we had a, a really bad loss uh, in Ghana. Uh, a lot of things uh, just came together in the worst possible way. And, and so at the end, uh, there's a, a sadness and a disappointment. Uh, I said many times during my final weeks in Egypt that I, I was so sorry for all the Egyptians that we couldn't make the dream happen. But at the same time, uh, working with those players was special uh, and having uh, that opportunity uh, is something that my wife and I will never forget and uh, in, in many ways uh, I still feel that we succeeded even though we didn't quite get to the World Cup. During the time when I was coaching the US national team I would come to Europe and I would try to follow our players and I would uh, travel and spend uh, in some cases, four weeks on the road, watching matches in different countries, just getting a feel for what the leagues look like, what the players look like. And during that time, uh, Clarence Goodson and Hunter Freeman were playing for Start, and Troy Perkins was playing for Valeringa. And then eventually, uh, Mix Diskarud came uh, up on the radar screen for the U.S. after he had played for the uh, under-20s. And so I saw him play for Stabek. And, you know, I, I had a, a real appreciation of, of the leagues in Scandinavia and uh, uh, the Norwegian league, the Tipe Ligen. Uh, and I, I got a sense uh, about Stabek uh, as a club, about uh, the fact that uh, there was a real pride in, in the way it went about things, uh, a family club, a, a club that put a real importance on developing young players, uh, a club that, that believed that there was a Stabek way of playing. And uh, uh, when I finished in Egypt, uh, I was still eager to find a, a club challenge, uh, seven years in a row working with the national team. That was great, but I, I prefer the day-to-day -day part. I prefer uh, being on the field and trying over the course of, of training every day to create a good environment and build a, a, a club that can do something special. And when I came here a few weeks ago, um, I was impressed. 
uh, mainly because uh, I realized that in the, the last few years there's been some tough days at Stabek and that the people who were still here, the people who were still behind the club, the supporters, some of the, uh, the people in management, uh, they're the strong ones. They're the ones that when things uh, uh, bottomed out a little bit, they didn't disappear, they stood up strong. And, and so I felt that the opportunity now, uh, as the club is trying to reestablish its name and its way of playing and, uh, and, and, and its uh, style, fit with, with the kind of challenge that I've always enjoyed. Uh, a club that uh, takes pride in, in how it plays, a club that has great supporters, a club that, uh, uh, for me, um, has people involved who, who truly care about what the club's all about. And I, as I was sizing up some different options in the last few weeks, uh, I was really uh, most excited about uh, the thought of coming here and being part of it. After I visited uh, and after I spoke with uh, uh, Inga and uh, with Espen, uh, when I went back to Egypt, the first thing I did was uh, start to start to go back and look at some of the matches from last season. And I watched uh, probably six or seven matches. And I was impressed with the, the structure of the team, the movement, the, the organization. Uh, I felt that there was still a, a good way of doing things on the field. It played like a team. Uh, and of course, I... Uh, after some of the conversations, especially with Inga, understand that when you come back into Tipperligan now, uh, uh, the level must uh, be raised because uh, the games will be faster, the games will be more competitive. Uh, so there's work now to find a, a balance, uh, to keep the core of good players that uh, brought the team back to Tipperligan, but at the same time, identify with the others, some players that can come in and give a little more experience. Uh, I think the, the possibility of building a young, exciting team um, that's fun to watch is there. Uh, you know, I believe in, in uh, a team that plays with energy and, and mobility and a team that wants to go forward. But of course, a team also has to have a, a strong mentality. A team has to fight for each other on the field. And, and when you're back in the top league, uh, you earn points many days with the mentality. It's not just the football. So we have to find a balance in all this. Um, but it has to be done still with uh, uh, an idea of, of what good football can be. And uh, I was impressed with some of the young players. And I'm excited to, to now start to work with them and, and find ways to uh, challenge them and move them forward and see uh, what kind of team we can put on the field. I mean, first, I'm really impressed with uh, um, Staubach's ideas, uh, you know, with the school, with uh, AC Milan and the Milan Lab. Um, uh, again, I, I've spoken earlier about uh, my experiences working with young players and, and uh, you know, I, I, I see what's going on, even, even the work now of uh, Tony Ordinas. Uh, I think this speaks volumes of uh, the philosophy of the club. And so for me, um, of course, the, the first and biggest responsibility is, is with the first team. But at the same time, uh, I'm one that will now uh, have an eye on it everything from top to bottom and, and try to find the right way to, to be involved. Uh, it's important in a club when young players know that uh, the manager of the first team is, is on top of things. Uh, I've had a chance uh, during my time uh, with the U.S. and Egypt to get to see uh, some big clubs in Europe and how things work. And one of the most impressive people that I've uh, gotten to know is, is obviously Sir Alex Ferguson. 
And when you go to Man United, the first thing that hits you is that he's on top of everything that goes on in the club. That if uh, a young player is having some issues off the field or not training well, he'll find a way to have a word with that young player. And that's because he's involved and he's paying attention. And there's good communication with his other coaches. And uh, Starbuck is a small club, but uh, I want to make sure that we are connected from top to bottom and from bottom to top. And uh, uh, I really look forward to working with the good people that are here. Uh, you know, I mentioned Tony, also uh, Jan Peter. And so there are good people who, who have got things going in a good direction. And uh, hopefully my experiences help them. And, and as I get to know them, we all can find uh, a way to make the situation a good one. I've been thinking a lot about the first meeting and uh, trying to, to find good words to, to talk to the players about uh, how excited I am to be here, uh, about the kind of football that, uh, that I hope we can achieve together. Uh, you know, I, I, I still uh, like to challenge players with uh, real football ideas. Um, that I'm here to also find a way to make them better and that together you, know, you, you raise the bar on, on what good football is. I mean, when you have the ball, uh, finding ways to, to pass and go forward and create chances. When you lose the ball, the kind of reactions that give you a chance to win the ball back quickly and, and the type of uh, commitment that uh, everyone has to, to work for each other. And, and I, I just want to find a starting point to give some simple words to say I'm looking forward to it. And, and really, um, at the beginning, you, you don't have all the answers, um, but you just want to um, have a starting point for working together that everyone can uh, feel good about. I've been impressed uh, in my, my conversations that uh, Espin and Inga and really the, the, the top people in the club um, are very realistic. They, they, they want the club to move forward, but they realize that it also has to be done the right way and at the right speed. Uh, so when you start this type of uh, project, uh, good project, you want to start with, uh, again, the right amount of enthusiasm. You want to uh, make sure everyone understands that uh, the goal is to build uh, a good team. But I, I think you wait a little bit before you, you see how far that good team can go. But uh, a team that, that uh, again, uh, the supporters can be, uh, can, can be proud to be part of, can be proud to watch, a team that's fun to watch, uh, players that, uh, that that put everything they have into to playing for the team. Uh, I, I sometimes think that you know, the best supporters will bleed for the club. And so you've got to have players who also then will bleed for the club. And then there's something that they share and they can all feel like they're working uh, together as a partner uh, in the whole thing. So um, for me, uh, it's early. I know that when you come from uh, the second league and you move back to Tipa Ligon, uh, you know, you want to make sure that uh, things continue to progress. And so uh, there'll be big challenges, but uh, I'm excited about trying to see how far we can take uh, the team over the coming years. I have heard such great things about uh, the supporters for Stabek, uh, the loyalty they have for the club, the passion. And so I look forward to having a chance to get to know people and to just let them know that uh, you know, I'm here, uh, I'm excited, I, I, I'm ready to try to be part of a, a great situation and, and together see if we can't uh, uh, make something special happen. And, and so uh, I think back even in the last two years in Egypt and uh, the feeling when you would at different times be stopped on the street by people who, who were excited about how the team was playing and what was happening. And uh, the flip side is that 
uh, we played some World Cup qualifiers in Egypt uh, where we were not allowed to have any fans in the stadium. And I, I think I said in a few interviews that uh, uh, a game with no fans has no soul. And so uh, I think more than ever, uh, my uh, appreciation for what supporters bring to a club is there. And I, I really look forward to getting to know as many of the supporters over time and, uh, um, and, and letting them know how much I appreciate what they bring to, to the club. When you have a team that uh, starts in the fourth or fifth league and, and sets the goal that um, it will win the cup. The goal was originally to win the cup in 1995. It wasn't achieved that year, but you did uh, move into the, the the Premier League at that time. So so you made a, a different step that year, and then eventually uh, winning the cup in 1998. But but I think at the core uh, with the club was uh, people who uh, had the philosophy about how uh, you know you dared to dream, and you have to. Uh, you know, life is about challenging yourself in these ways. And, and I think that if you look at now some of the moves I've made as a coach, uh, it fits. It fits that, uh, you know, you believe in big challenges and that you, you set big goals. Uh, you can't be afraid then if you just miss uh, on the day, maybe it's disappointing. Uh, but at the same time, trying to set the bar as high as possible, working with the idea that now um, we want to win the league, we want to win the cup. Uh, this is what football is all about. Um, sometimes it takes a little time to achieve some of those goals and dreams, but nonetheless, you don't get anywhere if you don't look and set the bar as high as possible. And I know that Staubach has done that in their history. Uh, and that in recent years when things have fallen off a little bit, uh, it hasn't changed the mindset of the, the, the main people in the club, and it certainly hasn't changed the mindset of the supporters. They've always been there, and uh, they support the club even on the days when things don't go well, but at the same time, uh, they dream of uh, big days ahead. Here I am at the, the beginning of uh, 2014, uh, coming here to Oslo and to Stabæk. And uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, for me, it's, 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 uh, you start the year with uh, an idea of, of what you want the year to be about. Uh, and, and the club uh, has people who support it at all levels, people who work behind the scenes, people who play, people who carry banners, um, but to make it all work, we need to make sure that we're in it together. And then I ask everyone to uh, think about um, coming on board, um, getting a season pass, being at the games. I look forward to meeting um, uh, all of the great supporters because I really feel like uh, uh, the best clubs in the world have a way where uh, from in all ways, there's a connection. People feel like they're part of something. It's not just that uh, they like football. They're part of something that's bigger than any one person. It's bigger than the coach. It's bigger than the player. It's, it's collective. And uh, for me, one of the big reasons that uh, you know, I, I made the decision to come to Stabæk is because uh, I have a great sense that uh, this is what the club is all about. And I'm really excited to to be part of it and to also get to know all of you who are, are a part of the club uh, for many years and have made good things happen in the past and will make good things happen in the future.